Good morning. Welcome to the Decoupage Queen Facebook page. My name is Shannon Stefanacci, and I am with Pick and Booze Vintage. Um, I was also supposed to be in the Kings and Queens group too, but for some reason I couldn't connect. So anyway, I'm here, I'm live, and we are going to do a fun project. Um, so let me put this up real quick. Make sure it's the right one. So we're going to do decoupage on a fabric chair. I have the chair right here. But before we talk about the chair, I want to show you, this is what I made last time. I made this on the Instagram page for the live. Um, this is the, let me see if I can get the glare off there. This is the abandoned. Yeah, this is the A1 size of the rice paper. Look how beautiful it is. And then I just added a little bit of rust to the outside of the frame just to stay with the theme of the abandoned truck and i added a little a little stencil here that says old truck rusty okay so just so i know that i am live and you can see me if you could just drop a comment let me know where you're from or just hello or something so that i know that i'm live and i'm in the right place <clears throat> um basically today what i'm going to be making is I have this chair. Let me just show you what the chair looks like. It looked like this before. So this was the plain Jane chair. It's got just brown leather, or excuse me, the brown wood, and then the light tan fabric. Um, and then what I did was I simply, I, I'm gonna make it look leather. So I went ahead, took the chair off, and I gave it a little bit of just a neutral color, just to mute everything that was on the chair. Um, so I just use a very neutral color, like I said. Let me get this. Um, but after that, I went ahead and I used some of this. Let's see. I just mixed up a concoction. Um, and what it is, is just to let you know, it's a little bit of orange. Some yellow. Hey, good. Thanks, Sarah. Now I know that I'm in the right place. <laughs> so um, this is orange with yellow and just a tad of a darker gray. Just it makes this nice, rich color. So we have here. This is me. I had to prep this yesterday because I wanted to make sure that my fabric was dry for today. So this is me putting on the leather look color. And then this is what it looks like. That was why it was drying, so it's a little bit shiny there. And currently, it looks like this. So we have the top of the chair. I'll show you. The top of the chair is just still painted in the neutral color. And then the seat of the chair is um, in the leather. So let's, let me zoom out just a tad. Um, There we go. So you can see the bottom is uh, it's ready to finish and finalize the leather look. The top is ready to take the paper. Now let me show you what paper we're going to use because this is a fun paper. Now, um, you know Decoupage Queen has the papers, but they also have the rice papers now, which are really, really high quality. But I really love this one. Let's take a peek at this. This one here. I love this paper. So this is what we're going to use on the back here. And then we're going to make the bottom. So we're going to finalize the leather look. And I'll show you how to do that. But let's get started with how we're going to put the paper on and what we're going to use. So I'm going to zoom in to another camera just so you can see better. Oh, I did that backwards. Hold on one second. <laughs> one more try there we have it okay so obviously this big paper is not going to fit in this little section so we're going to have to make it fit but before I do that I need to kind of decide what part of this fabulous paper do I want to use 
Now it does kind of look like Halloween, even though it's not Halloween, but I just love it. I love the Raven and I love this urn. Look at that decorative urn. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a piece of painter's tape just to hold the paper in place so I can line up where I want, whoops, what part and what section I want of this paper here. So I need it to cover, there we go. I love the raven, so I definitely want to have the raven. So we're going to do it like this. So I'm going to fold this down. And I'm just going to tape it. It's not 100% in place, but it's close enough. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to tape the bottom too so it doesn't really move. And this is just regular old painter's tape. All right. So now I'm just going to take my finger and lightly score it just so I know where I need to cut the paper. If I didn't want an exact line, what I'd probably do would, would be take my little artist brush and some water and tear it, but I kind of want it to make sure that it fits pretty good. So I want it to be, I want to make sure it has a kind of a crisp edge on it. So I'll take that off, grab my scissors, and now let's cut. I'm going to pull this off of here. I tend to find it easier if you flip it over and you can see the scored line easier. And even if I accidentally maybe cut a little too short, it's okay because I can put some dark wax and I can conceal that. Plus if it's a little too big, I can go back and cut the edge off. Now I'm hoping I picked the right section of this paper. It's a, it's a bigger paper and it's beautiful, but of course it doesn't fit. All right, let's, let's see what we have here. So here, oh, look at that. Oh, I love it. What do you think so far? Do you love it? <laughs> All right, so, wow. Sorry, I got sidetracked. I really, really, really love it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use something called, can you see that pretty good? This is the uh, Pent Art, the Decoupage Varnish and Glue. This one is textile, so this one's really good for um, fabrics. So we're going to use this one first. Now, the trick to when you're painting fabric is after you paint it, you want to make sure you sand it. Um, when I painted this, I used 50% water and 50% paint. Now, you have to think of it like you're dyeing the fabric. You're not painting on top of the fabric. You actually want it to soak into the fabric. And the reason why I did the top, even though I'm covering it with decoupage paper, is because I want this, I didn't want that yellowish color to come through. I wanted more of a more neutral, natural, if that makes sense. Let me get that out of the way. So I'm just going to keep this here so you can see it. And then I have my little face here so you can see that too. Um, again, this is the textile one. All right, I see a bunch of comments coming through, but my iPad's way over there and I can't see it. Um, if there's any decoupage retailers on here and they want to um, answer those for me, they'd be fabulous. If not, I will answer them at the end. Um, so what I'm going to do is let me grab my little brush. Now I more or less want to put it on, um, pretty fast, but at a good, a good, a good amount because I don't want it to soak into the fabric before I can get my 
decoupage medium on. So, and generally as a rule of thumb, you, you, you want to put it in another container because if you taint, there we go, I poured some in there. If you happen to have a dirty brush or <clears throat> anything loose, you can get it in, put it back into your jar, and then you ruin your whole jar and you don't want to do that. So, all right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to stand up for this. Let's put it up a little bit higher. Perfect. So here we go. And I'm just going to do the whole thing at once. I think it's a small enough space that it should be able, I should be able to do that. I'm going to put it on fast and then I'll go back. Oops. Then I'll go back and I'll make sure it's all even. I'm just kind of quickly slopping it on. Very important to pay attention to the edges. Oops. section over here I've got to get. Let me... Okay, so it looks like I've got pretty good coverage on there. So real quick though, I did spill some. I'm going to get that off the chair. All right, so here we go. Let's put this on. Need to squish you over just a hair. There we go. Now the edge of the cushion is a little bit rounded, so we might get a few wrinkles, but that's okay with me because once I get this paper on and it dries, I'll go back and I'll probably add some dark wax. Wow. Oh my gosh, you guys. What do you think so far? I just love this paper. I've been a fan of this paper for a very long time. Probably one of my favorite product projects I've made with this paper is I did a table with some resin on top. It was super cute. Okay, so now I need to go back and I need to make sure, I'm gonna take this off real quick. I am going to put a top coat on this so, because I want it to stay, I want it to, um, stay i want to get the edges so i'm gonna do that really quick chalk paint yes i use chalk paint thank you dawn i'm gonna scroll back so i can see some comments real quick hi from minnesota oh absolutely you can do this on leather chairs absolutely oh yes kim five dollar chair you cannot beat that all right i'm gonna put this up in the corner just so you can see what medium i use so that is what i used Okay, so now we're going to go back and we're going to add some more. Where's my, here we go. I need to put some more of this in here. There we go. And so I'm going to start first with my edges because I want to make sure that I get the edges and they're down and they're not going anywhere. Like here, if you see how this is coming up a little bit? That's okay. I'm just going to stick a little bit underneath it and I'll push it down. Okay, so I think I've got the edges pretty well. But I want to make sure, I want to go over the whole entire paper because I want to make sure that I have that all on there too. I'm just going to raise this up just to scotch. Mm -hmm. There we go. So now I can stand up and I'm actually in the picture. So I'm going to use this brush and I'm going to apply the outer coat. Applying a little bit of pressure, not too much because I don't want it to tear the paper. The paper is not as sturdy as the rice paper. This is just the the first edition of the papers, Decoupage Queen. 
Now, I know some of you are, are going to ask me, will this crack? Well, it could. But it's on there, and if it does crack, it'll just add a little bit of character. Okay, so I'm pushing, but I'm, again, not pushing too hard because I do not want it to have paper. Okay, so I have a good coat on there. <laughs> you can't really see the design right now, but I tell you what, it looks fabulous if you saw it before, right, right before I put the second coat on. All right, let me go around the edges. I'm just going to get the extra glue off. Now, for those of you that are just tuning in, I'm Shannon with Pick and Boot Vintage in sunny southwest florida i'm actually on the decoupage queen design team and i'm very happy to be on there with a bunch of talented ladies and there's so many fun papers and they decoupage queen just picked up pent art which has all the different um mixed media supplies so you have decoupage mediums you have crackle fine crack i mean antiquing gel so many different things, projects. You can make lots and lots of stuff. Okay, so while this is drying, now what we're going to do is I'm going to work on this part. I'm going to show you how to get that leather look. Um, I do need just the camera real quick, so just bear with me for a second. I just want, I like to have it where it's close and tight so you can see what's going on. Please don't pay any attention to my floor down here. It's not the best floor, but... <laughs> All right, let me get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. Now, again, this was that yellow color. Let me show you another picture of that chair, because just because I have it up here. So this was the before. Here's the before chair. I gave it a light coat of tan, and then um, I used the leather look paint mixture. I'm not going to give you the exact mixture, um, depending on the paint you use, but it is orange, yellow, and a little bit of gray. On my website, which is pbvintage.com, I do have um, the projects, uh, products listed so you know everything you need for it. And that is on my website, pbvintage.com. Actually, where do I have that? I do have that. Let's put that up. Um, but let's get started with this. So let me take that before picture off because you know what it looks like now. And the first thing you want to do is... After you paint it, you definitely want to sand it. So I sanded this down. It is ready to go. It makes a huge difference. If you don't sand your painted fabric down, it's crunchy, uncomfortable. But since it's sanded, it's super smooth. The cloth now feels more like, let's say, outside, um, outside fabric or like pleather. So... The first thing you need to do is you need to clear wax it. So we have to clear wax the whole thing. Doesn't matter what brand you use, you just need to clear wax it. So that's what we're going to do here. My cushion is not attached yet, so if it moves around, I apologize. <laughs> it is amazing, though, what you can do with chalk paint and decoupage. They can totally transform totally transform anything you have that you don't like anymore okay can you see that can you see the difference like this is not waxed yet this is waxed so it's giving it more of a already just with the clear wax it's giving it more of a leather look and there are a lot of people that teach the leather look class so if you're interested in perfecting the leather look, make sure you just Google some of those. I'm just giving you a quick rundown on it. So there we have it. Okay, so this is the clear wax. And because if you look carefully or closely, you can see that there was a little bit of a design on here. So I'm just going to go back and make sure I'm going to circle like this. Make sure that I get in and around every part of the fabric because of that little design. There we go. 
All right. <laughs> now this is where the fun happens when you're doing the leather look. This is where you can be totally creative and you can add shade however you want to do it. I'm doing this now because I'm hoping that maybe the top will dry so we can do some decorating around it. You can actually see what it looks like dry. Uh, I don't want to use a hair dryer on it um, just because I don't want it to crack or whatever. So depending on how long this takes and how this reacts, we'll see what we can do. All right. So next, what you need after you have clear wax your hole, now you just need some dark wax, which is brown. You can get the leather look by um, this way, or you can do a gray leather look, which I've seen, which is beautiful. You can do a dark, like a bluish leather look. All of them come out fantastic, and they're fun. All right, so I just have some dark wax. I'm going to put it here on the camera. Dark wax. And I'm going to be using just this little brush to put it on. And I'm keeping my rag handy just because I want, you want to be able to rub it in. All right, so here we go. Let's start right here. So I'm just going to kind of, it's, um, how do you say it? Stipple. I'm trying to push the dark. When you do this, you definitely want the edges to be darker. Sometimes it takes um, two to three different layers of the dark wax. It just depends on really the look you're going for. Can you see that okay in the camera? There we go. I'll get up here so you can see a little bit better. And you know what? Let's see. Yeah, you can see it pretty good on the camera. I, again, I have my rag handy and I can just rub it in just a little bit. But you can definitely see the leather look coming to life, right? Let's get over here. My arms are a little tired. I went to the gym this morning and it was some upper body. See that okay? Let me see if I can back it up a little bit. There we go. How's that? Good? So, might just give it a light shadow. There we go. I just want you guys to be able to see. See how it's coming together in the leather look? Ah, oh, what do you think? <laughs> I love it. All right, so I'm gonna have to turn this this way and let me get over here. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go around the edge and keep it darker on the edge and then we'll go back and we're gonna stipple in some darker areas. You will notice the design a little bit more of the fabric when you lay down the wax, but that's okay. It still is looking really, really fun. All right. Actually, you know what? I can do this. <laughs> I can turn it a little bit so I can work on it better over here. All right. All right, I feel like I have a good frame of, let me put this back, of the wood, um, of the dark wax, make it look leather. Now I'm just going to kind of just lightly 
not adding any more extra wax, just what's on my brush now, kind of just shading it just a little bit. So there we go. Now let's go back in with some dark wax and we are going to um, give it some shaded and some dimension. So we're just going to, oops, one of my brush hairs is coming out. That's not good. Now we're going to stipple and we're going to leave some darker areas. The wax will dry and it will not go on your clothes. So no worries about that. Let me see how that's coming on. See how that's becoming more of a giving more dimension. If you have had a leather chair, you know that the colors of leather really can vary depending on if it's like a couch, one area gets sat in a little bit more than the other. Oops, you can see my fingerprints. Let's get rid of those. <laughs> Again, though, you do want to make sure that the wax is totally cured before you sit on it. I'm trying to go a little bit faster so I don't bore you all to death with my leather painting, but All right, let's get over here. So what do you think so far? Does it look like leather? I can see from this camera angle, it looks pretty good. Sometimes when you're creating, it looks so much better in person than it does on camera. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit, use a little bit of darker there. There we go. So now I'm going to go a little heavier, but I'm not going to rub it in just for that variation. Can you see that? Let me go right over here where you can see a little better. Guys, it's, this is super easy to do. Anybody can do it. This is, the top is drying nice, so we'll get a full shot of that in just a minute. All right, looks like right here. Like you don't want to be able to see, you can see where my brush strokes were. So you make sure you want to go over them because you definitely don't want to see what you never want to know what kind of tool you used. So that should always be hidden. You should always make sure it's blended where you don't know. There we go. A little bit more. So like, see here, see the variation? Totally looks like leather. What do you think? Let me scroll up and see the, some comments real quick. Let's see, let me get my glasses so I can see. Um, glad you like it, Donna. Make sure you, uh, y'all, if you like this and you um, have a friend you think they might like it, please share it. Um, I'll be doing more projects with the Pentart because I just, I'm carrying the whole line now. Basically, I've been ordering and ordering. So I have my, peep, my Pick and Boots Vintage Facebook page, but I've also started a new page called Creating with Shannon. So I can have one for furniture, basically, and then one for all the cool mixed media stuff. But this is Decoupage Queen, so this is what we're talking about today. The awesome rice papers. Let me zoom back out where it's just the chair. Just the chair, solo. And now you can see, see where it's drying? Let's... Well, what I want to do is when this is fully dry, I'm going to be putting some, there we go. There's a better look at it. 
I'll get this up so you guys can see that. Because what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to add some more dark wax. Let's see, is that going to show? No, it still has the it still has the old version. But there you go. So there's a great picture of the faux leather. Now with this chair, let's see if I can push it up a little bit. Since my other camera doesn't want to work right now. Turn it so you less the glare. All right. You can still see where it's drying and there are a couple where it's pulled up a little bit. Those are wrinkles. Perfectly okay with that because once this is done, I'm going to take the dark wax and I'm going to frame it in and I'm going to put a little bit of dark wax where those wrinkles are. So it really gives it some great character. Um, continue recording. So basically now what I want to do is I want to just give it a little bit of detail right here just to carry it up. So what I'm gonna do is this little detail here, I'm gonna add a little bit of gold gilding wax. So let me just grab that real quick. So this is what the gold gilding wax looks like. Whoops, let me go down a little bit. Ta -da, just some gold. And I'm just gonna simply use my finger. You can use a brush, you can use whatever. I like to use my finger because I feel like I have a little bit more control on it. So. I'm just going to be touching on the right on the design up here. See that? All right, let me get the other side. The gilding wax is for when you're creating, it's on the peaks. There's always something called peaks and valleys. Peaks are the part that stand up, and that's what the gilding wax is for. Really brings out the design. Look at that. What do you think? Now, once I frame in the edge of the paper with the dark wax, I'm going to come back with the gold gilding, and I'm going to hit the edge of this. Um, there's a little wood round here. I don't want to do it yet because I'll probably be a little sloppy with my dark wax. So I definitely want to make sure I can do that first, but the paper is just not dry enough. Um, so we're not going to be able to do that. But for those of you that um, know me and see some of my work, I always will take completed pictures and I will share them. Definitely in the Kings and Queens group. If you're not part of the Kings and Queens group, definitely join there that is where all um the, everybody shares products projects that they've made with the decoupage queen papers um let's see so real quick i just want to do that i'll probably do a little bit more tweaking offline just because i'll be able to stand and get a better angle so um, if you joined me today and liked the video, I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions about what I did today, please drop them in the comments. I will go back later and look at it. Um, you can follow me on social media on Pick and Boots Vintage or Creating with Shannon. And I just want to say thank you, and you all have a fabulous day.